locked in. Look at what we have here, folks. To the only show that matters. The cream of the crop. Duke loves wrestling. And there is no one that does it better than your host. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. The Duke. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Happy Thanksgiving! Why are you going to do that? You know how early it is right now? Come on. I'm used to seeing you in the evening. This is not good. And Listen, it's a holiday. It's a holiday, so we had to come into the special location, you know, before dinner. Come on, man. Wake up. Get I'm your not, act no, together I, here. Did you watch the parade this morning? That was did you pretty get awesome. nice and yeah. You know what I like about the parade? They always do the Charlie Brown things like the big Snoopy and all that sure. good stuff. That's sure. pretty cool there. So I, I, I do enjoy the Macy's Day Parade. See, it's not the Macy's Day Parade because it's it? Thanksgiving Day. It's the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Whatever they want to call it, I don't. What, what, what do I care? I like right? Santa Claus at the end. Yeah, yeah. The Christmas, That's you cool. know, you don't put up Christmas decorations till Santa Claus is at the end. Sure. And you also don't. If if you're one of these guys today, you better be careful. <laughs> did you Did you see that uh, Trump? He pardoned uh, the turkey there. <laughs> I mean, it might be have been the first time in history that a turkey pardoned a turkey. Yeah. Well, I- Who's going to pardon Trump Listen, is what I want to know. If the they should bring service, the turkey back to pardon Trump <laughs> to pardon once Trump. he's convicted. Yeah, there that, it is. You know what? That could work. Wouldn't that be it? See, that's See? theater, Trump. I'm that's telling you. That's theater. You want to be theatrical? That's See? the way to do it. Got to be in on it. I'm telling Unbelievable. you. Unbelievable. Welcome back to Duke Loves Wrestling. I am the Duke, and yes, I wish you a happy Thanksgiving. I've and had I'm that turkey. keep on doing that no matter what my illustrious co-host, the Boston bad boy, I am Mike Pelosi, says. I got the turkey in. Nice, low, and slow. Good, okay, I good. don't have time to sit here all day with you, so we got to get moving on this the, friggin' I the, show today. I got the spiral ham, man. Spiral ham. Oh man, with the with the brown sugar crust oh, on yeah. top. So you do the ham thing. I do the ham thing. Really? I, I do the ham. Not thing. a turkey thing. No. Really? Do you just dislike turkey? I don't dislike it. I just prefer the ham. Are you anti-American? Is that what this is? That is, you're going ham? Am I a card-carrying member of of the <laughs> ham society? Yeah, yes. Yes. Listen, I, am. I love a good yeah. ham. But we're talking turkey, nah, we're is what's going turkey. on here today. We don't today. talk turkey there, Buster. You better talk turkey. That's all break. i got to tell you. Give me a break. Folks, this is a special holiday edition. We're not going to keep you here all day. Thank God. we got some good stuff lined up for you, though. In fact, you know what, Boston bad boy? What? Let's do something a little different here. Okay. Okay? Let's do something exciting. <laughs> That'd be a nice change of pace. Yes, yes. I want to hear from my loyal listeners. All right. First of all, you don't have any loyal listeners. I, okay? I have plenty of them, actually. And 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 you you don't certainly don't have any sane listeners, because I was last week. I put out a call for questions. We got some good questions because I all right. went out of my Putting way. So full. Okay. Okay. I went out of my way Listen to get to, que- to get questions. We had some good questions. When you get questions, you send me these uh, audio messages from hell. <laughs> I mean, these are people who are just, they're the, the worst in don't society. Don't talk about our loyal listeners like that. Jeez. They don't, I don't know what they're talking about. I, I mean, I'm going to pull some of them here. Okay. Because it's a holiday, and I'm in the holiday spirit. Yeah. Uh, I hope these people are drinking heavily. And I hope our audience is already drinking heavily because that's the only way to get through this show. Oh, give me a break. <laughs> Come on, play the play I'm the, doing my David Letterman. Play the messages from my loyal uh, listeners, Yeah, okay. Please. So here's a message Finally. from a fella. Named Alberto. Oh. Alberto has a question. Okay, here it is. Give me one. Anytime now, Alberto. Hey, I have a question for you, Duke. My name is Alberto from Boston. The question is How many Royal Rumbles did Shawn Michael participate in, and how many of those he won? Wow. Yeah. We, 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 first of all, we're, is Alberto in Grand Central Station? <laughs> what is going on with the audio here? Alberto, you submit audio to the show, yeah. get it together, yeah. first of all. Yeah. Well, Secondly, this isn't effing Wikipedia here. I, this, he thinks it is. This is no, I'm, we're not your private Wikipedia. I'm telling you. We're this, here for insight. Yes. When it comes to me, we're here for expert opinion. Analysis. You, I, I don't know what your analysis is about, but when Give it comes to the stuff that I can talk about, yeah. it's right on point. Alberto. This is a trivia. Wikipedia. Who wants to be a millionaire today or something? Yeah, I don't know. Jeopardy. So he, this is what I'm talking about. These yeah. are the people you send hey, me. Hey, be nice to Alberto. I'm sure he, he tried. His new nickname? Yeah. Alberto V05. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to uh, Justin. Justin. Justin has something to say. Hey, it's Justin Agringo. I have a question for Duke. Okay. I don't think Ric Flair is the best. Let's put it that way. Okay. 
I don't think that was a question. Let's that, put it that way. Yeah, that was not a I question. have a question for Duke. <laughs> I don't think Ric Flair is the best. Yeah. Are, 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 what kind of medication level are these people on? Justin El Gringo. Did you hear Justin that? El, is that what he That's said? That's what he said. I yeah. thought he said Justin but mashed potato mouth. I, <laughs> Get it together, Justin El wow. Gringo. Wow. And a yeah. question. Well, he was very rude, by the way. A question ends with, never yeah. mind where you're you besmirching. Ric Flair. Ric Flair. Of all people. Which I will agree, we don't have that on this show. Yeah, we don't have that on this show. Uh, that wasn't that. even an effing question. It was not a question. I'm, I'm actually very disappointed in, in this Justin El Gringo. Well, I'm going to yeah. tell you, we've got two more to go, and you're going to get even more disappointed. Well, come on. Give me something better than that. All right, here's, here's one from a, a little clever fella named Mr. E. Mr. Get e. it? Mr. E. Oh, fancy name. <laughs> Hey, this is Mr. E from Lawrence. Uh, Lawrence question. Do you really think um, The Undertaker is going to stay retired or not? So you're going to go to answer the question. Hey, but... this is Mr. E. Uh, you can follow my YouTube channel and Instagram at L Real Mr. E. What the uh, Question. Do you really think The Undertaker is retiring or not? All right, first of all, L Mr. E, whatever the hell your name is. <laughs> I don't know how they do it in Lawrence. Yeah, right. But on this show... You don't cut a promo for your own stuff when you're asking a question. Well, come on, Tony. He's trying to cut a spot. I'm trying to <laughs> cut a spot, Tony. What is this guy doing? Well, he messed up. He forgot to plug his own and stuff And where in the are beginning. these people? They're, in, they're on the freeway. They're yeah. in the, the train stations. No one owns a quiet room. Listen, we have a lot of listeners. Go who, sit in your car. They listen to our show at work. They listen to it in the in the. the when they're drinking heavily. Sure, yeah, exactly. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, it's Thanksgiving. Not, what do you want them to do? Well, I People don't know when the, the house. I don't know. Yeah, you know, I don't know. Mr. E, he's just trying to plug his YouTube. He can't or get it together here. Yeah. Hey, look. Hey, man. hope on the YouTube. On the YouTube. Yeah, on he's the got YouTube. it together a little more. <laughs> That's YouTube. all I gotta say. Jesus, Mr. E, uh, I don't even know. I don't even remember what he asked. Something about the Undertaker. Something about the Undertaker. Yes, my answer is yes. Whatever it was. Cool. Yes. And you know, my answer is yes too. Because if they can cash in on somebody, they will until they're actually dead. In, on, until man. the Undertaker needs an actual Undertaker, Vince McMahon's going to be ringing him out it's for nickels. It's bad enough you you make fun of the guests. I mean the the uh, listeners. They don't make fun of Vince McMahon. It, it's a holiday. Stop it. Oh, it's all, so you can't yeah. make fun of it. It's That's like you, right. Like it's, Nana would tell you, don't. don't it's a sin. Don't. It's, it's a sin. I could never. <laughs> the kids these days, the clothes they wear, the pants hanging down low. I could never. That's right. All right, we go. I can't do any more than this. This is gonna be the best one. Come I on. got cranberry sauce waiting for me. Yeah, yeah. I got uh, stuffing. Come on. I, now wait a minute. Uh, I, you do the ham. I do the ham. Stuffing? Yeah, I like. The okay, stuffing. so you do stuffing with the ham. I do stuffing with the chicken. Wait, so you're doing a ham and a I chicken? I do a roasted chicken instead of the turkey. So Come wait, on. you get a roasted chicken and a ham. Yes. So to quote Frank Costanza, you got the chicken. Yep. And the rooster. That's right. Who's going with the hen? <laughs> I don't know. that. So you do the you do poultry. I do the poultry. So yes. you get the stuffing. So there's a lot, how many people you got here? You got a lot of people. There's enough, man. You get you know. You get a couple dozen of people course. for the ham and the, well, you get the leftovers. Exactly. Which are great because you'll do like sandwiches, salad, sandwiches, the, for the whole night. And then guys. like four days later, you're like, get it out of here. Yep. I I'm can't done, even I'm look at done it. Done with it. I don't want to look at I'm it. I'm done with it. I That's do it. like the spiral ham though. It's a it's a great of course value. You do. I know when it you comes do. To, you, I do the spiral. You ham. do the spiral. Yeah. Come on. And it's so easy. You can't mess it Just up. Pop it in. Pop it in. Let it go. Yep. That's it. All right, we got one more from Ricky. Oh, Ricky. Ricky. All right, here we go. Here's Ricky. Hey, this is Ricky from hey. Everett, Mass. Hey, Ricky. And my question is to you is, do you ever think The Rock is ever going to make an appearance at the WWE? And if so, do you also think that he's going to wrestle? Because, you know, I would love to see him wrestle one more time because every time he comes into the ring, I get goosebumps. <laughs> so that's my question to you. First of all, Ricky, are you in a barber shop? What is going on? Behind you, he's getting fresh, man. <laughs> he's getting fresh and clean. Ricky sounds like day. Ricky sounds like you know he just got out. Hey, I yeah, just got out. Come give you. me a hug. Yes, that's right. You recognize me? That's right. Come on, Ricky's just... Ricky's one second away from telling someone to go get their shine box. That's... <laughs> and I hope it's you actually, because that would be great. Ricky, oh Ricky, oh boy, Ricky, I, he gets goosebumps. Ricky, Ricky goosebumps. That's it. There that's it is. His name. That's his that's name his now. Name. Ricky, Ricky goosebumps. goosebumps. Wow. Uh, I I think it goes without question that The Rock makes appearances. He will be at WrestleMania. Know. Absolutely. And again, he's he's such a young guy. Yeah. He's gonna be at the next twenty WrestleMania. Exactly. Yeah, doing something. Absolutely. And he he also they're trying to leverage his fame outside of it. Why wouldn't you? 
It goes hand in hand. If I was him, I'd tell them to screw. No, no, no. Because the no, WWE no. is just a, a, a disaster. Here's what you do. Starting in January, you build up to WrestleMania, which happens the first week of, of, of April. Yeah. And then for the rest of the year, your movies do well. He's yeah. going to put out two or three movies. You know, if if Vince McMahon, if I'm The Rock, yep. and I'm making, I'm, we talked about this, the sure. second or the highest, second highest billing actor in America, in the world. In the world, yeah. Vince McMahon comes calling, and he says, hey, we want you to come. You know what I'd say to Vince McMahon? All right. That's enough. <laughs> Listen, we got a special interview with a legend, folks. Mm -hmm. A local legend, okay? A man who has been in the wrestling business, both as a wrestler, commentator, the whole nine yards. We're talking about the Duke of Dorchester. You're telling me I got a real Duke. That's right. Not well, a fake one like hey, I got to look at every stay week. Stay out of this right now. Jesus. Pete Doherty is going to join us tonight, folks. In fact, uh, I see the, the uh, line blinking over there. Yep. Let's take a quick break and let's get Pete on the line here because uh, this is going to be fun. All right, this is the Maverick from NWL, also known as Moonshine Mantel, and you're listening to Duke Loves Wrestling. Hey, this is the Duke of Dorchester, Pete Doherty, born and raised in Dorchester, Massachusetts. Yeah! Wow. Wow. You see that? The Duke of Dorchester. The Duke of I Dorchester. Pete Darty. Oh, my goodness. Some... It is an honor to have a local legend on the Duke Loves Wrestling podcast. Well, I'm pleased to be here. I'll tell you that. Yes, I, I tell you, it's pleasing me to talk to a real Duke, not the fake all Duke right. I got to talk to all the time. <laughs> goodness. You see this. All right. All right, bad boy. And That's a guy cool. from Dorchester. That's right. Real Dorchester. <laughs> I have to ask, were you one of the friends of Eddie Coyle? Because I feel uh -oh. like you would have fit uh -oh. right in there. Uh, no, I wasn't, but I know who you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> That's an insider uh, scoop I, I right know, there. Uh, I did know Whitey Bulger. Oh, uh-oh. Uh, from South Boston. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, that crew, I knew some of them, you know. I'm well, sorry to hear it. Well, those guys must have loved you, right? I mean, come on, you, you were a local <laughs> yeah. legend there. Yeah, in fact, uh, one time I said, to, this is a true story, I said, hey, Whitey, uh, look at I'm wrestling in Boston Garden tonight. Yeah, I'll give you give you a couple of tickets right up front. He says, Duke, I don't need them. I'm going there anytime. <laughs> and I don't pay anything. I just like that he said, hey, Whitey. I don't know how many I people know. said that and yeah. got away with it. Yeah, well, he did. <laughs> you don't mention the Duke of Dorchester. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. So, uh, Duke, yeah. you had a hell of a career, though, because you started off uh, in the WWF for Vince Sr., right? Oh, yeah. I started. I started off, uh, let me see, uh, with WWE and WWF with Vince Sr. And then when Vince Sr. passed away, uh, Vince Jr. took over. Mm -hmm. And Vince Jr., uh, I said to him one day, uh, uh, look, at, I'd like to be able to keep my name, the Duke of Dorchester. And he says, no problem, Duke. We want to keep it that way also, you know, just everything uh, going the same way. Wow. So uh, we, uh, let me see. We, I traveled with WWE, WWF, all the way to Kuwait. Ooh. Wow. We wrestled there in Kuwait, and uh, it, was, it was just fantastic. We wrestled in a, uh, a soccer stadium. <laughs> it held over a hundred thousand people. Oh, I think the actual thing is like sixty thousand. Yeah, but they had more you seats. Put standing room, and then you got people climbing over the walls. <laughs> it, was, it was just unbelievable. That's crazy. I got. I want to ask you. So when you're when you're working in that era, when you're working for the WWE under Vince Senior, who are the guys you're hanging around with? Who's your crew? Who are the other names of uh, the, the guys oh. that you worked with? George the Animal Steel. Of course. Oh, of course. Legendary. All right. Haystack Calhoun. Oh, big man. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, the big man. Oh, God. But those are two huge uh, names. Larry Sharp. Oh, yeah, of course. From New Jersey. I, he was Iron Mike Sharp's uh, father, right? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's true. That's true, yeah. See? So what was it like oh. back then? How did, you know, you guys traveling in, from place to place, 
you know, you're, you're, you're really oh. working. It's not like the sort of glamorous TV gigs they got right now. Exactly. Give us a taste we, of what that's like. We would go through a car every year. When I first started, <laughs> yeah. I started with a brand new 1971 LTD convertible. Oh. All right? So being a good guy, uh, uh, the promoter asked me, hey, would you pick up Andre the Giant <laughs> course. at Logan Airport? Of course, of course. Because we're wrestling up in Saugus somewhere, you know? And uh, I said, sure, I'll do that. So I go over, I pick up Andre, but Andre's got his, his buddy with him, Frank Ravo. Yep. And uh, he's... He's another 300 pounds. <laughs> At so least. They're both sitting on the right side of the car. <laughs> Andre's in the front with his head. <laughs> like, put the top down, <laughs> put the lid down, <laughs> and his head sticking up. And the other guy there, boom. And the car is going down at a, a tilt on the right. <laughs> okay? All right. So when we finally get there, they get out. And my car still stayed that way. All the time. Oh, man. Shocks are gone. The whole nine yards. The shock never gone. I, I, I love the idea of bringing that car into the mechanic. And he goes, what the hell happened? You yeah. go, you'll never believe. Yeah, I put the Andre Giant. Giant at the airport. Hey, am I covered under warranty? Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. So, oh, yeah. That, that was cool. But uh, that, that, that was like, uh, in those days, we had to drive everywhere. Yeah. You know, down to Philadelphia. Do TV down there yeah, at Allentown in Hamburg, Pennsylvania. Oof. And then all the guys uh, would drive over to uh, whatever town we're scheduled or booked to go uh, wrestle in. Mm. And you just drive everywhere. It's an, everyone went through a car every year. Hey, Duke, yeah. let me ask you, why why was the Cape such a hot spot for the, the old WWF? You, you guys did a lot of shows on the Cape, which I was surprised when I was looking through the records to see that. Yeah, because Vince McMahon Jr., he owned the, uh, what do you call that? Not the Metal League. What is it? The Metal League? The Coliseum? The The Coliseum. Coliseum. He owned that. Really? I didn't know that. Oh, look at that. He owned that. And that was a beautiful building, wasn't it, in the summertime? No windows, no air conditioning. (laughs) Yeah, it was (laughs) a real sweat sack. But we, we always packed them in there. McMahon loved the place and all that there. But... It was only good for the summertime. He he wanted something year round. Oh. So uh, he only uh, I think he only held on to that for like two years, and then he sold that. Wow. And he made a bundle on that too. T- but, uh, Tell us between the two of them, Vince McMahon Jr. and Vince McMahon Sr. Which one did you uh, get along with the best, and why? Uh, I'll tell you what I got along good with both of them. Yep. Vince McMahon Sr. Uh, what a gentleman! I mean. Uh, really class class act you know mm, mm. never raised his voice never said nothing vince jr though you piss him off <laughs> he will scream <laughs> you know but then he'd settle down and everything uh, become copacetic you know? of course of course <laughs> you know, like them fancy words baby Damn, Dave, listen <laughs> we're talking to the duke of dorchester pete doherty here the, the man yeah. now, now you were on the very first saturday night's main event all right, NBC, where they, they, they uh, Saturday Night Live took a hiatus, and you guys were in the spot there. Now, you wrestled Junkyard Dog that night, right? The JYD, yeah. Yes, sir. What was that like? <laughs> JYD was, was pretty cool. The, it was easy. And being that, uh, that we were the, like the first show on, uh, and I think I was the uh, first match. Yes, too. sir. <laughs> How's that so, for history? So all, all you fantastic. So all I, all my job was is to get up and pump the crowd. <laughs> and I used to uh, uh, sometimes I would show uh, the number one finger, mm. showing everyone I was number one. That's right. That's right. <laughs> With the blonde hair. That's right. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, that went over big time. That got a lot of heat. But I'll tell you what, on that number one deal though. I did that in Kuwait. Mm. Oh. oh. <laughs> I'm sure that did that not go over well. That is a bad thing to do in Kuwait. Yes, sir. They were ready to kill me. Wow. Oh, Jesus. So we're talking about uh, making... It's... No, go ahead. It's Finish a... up. It's a it's a obscene gesture over there. Yep. And as well as here. But it really has a bad con, you know, 
bad vibe. You're lucky you got out alive there, Pete. I, I am, I am. <laughs> so you, you make history on this national broadcast, something that goes on to become this this historic, famous thing for the WWE and, 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 and for wrestling in general. It's sort of the MTV moment for wrestling, where it right. really jumps into mainstream. You're a guy that comes from sort of before that, the old school style, transitioning to this new school. What is there a difference when you're wrestling for TV versus wrestling just to pump the crowd up? Uh, wrestling for TV is, you, you know, you're only out there for like, uh, say, t- a 10-minute match. Mm-hmm. So in that 10 minutes, you've got to tell the whole story about what you're doing. Sure. You know? And as opposed to uh, out on the road, in a match out on the road, you have more time and more access mm-hmm. and able to do more, whereas you've got to screen, uh, squeeze all that in there on the uh, program, the NBC program. Remember, I'm, I am 74 years old. Listen, age is just a number. And, <laughs> yeah, and you know, I, sometimes, sometimes I kind of, uh, you guys are gonna have to help me out. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Duke I, claims to be a young man, but if you had to sit here and look at him, you would say, "I think would he's you aged. Stop. He hasn't aged well." Would I'll you just say stop? That. I mean, you're a wise guy over here. <laughs> Jeez, embarrass me well, in front I'll of tell Duke. You what, one reason why I grow this beard, yeah, is because everywhere I go, not everywhere I go, but I look younger than what I really am. That's right. You're talking to two oh. bearded men too, so no, I, I think, yeah, I we're, think all we're on the to same boat here, brother. <laughs> you know. Well, see, it's it's funny. Tell them the Boston Bad Boy story here. So, so the Boston Bad Boy is named after a, a previous Boston bad boy. Tony Rumble. Yeah. Do you remember Tony Rumble from the old ICW? I don't remember him too well. I've heard of him. He, the the Savolis, they ran the uh, ICW there. Uh, Joe Savoli yeah. and his father there. Angelo Savoli. Angelo, yeah. Angelo yeah. is the, the old man there. So yeah. so uh, Rumble took over right after them. And, oh. And he would always wear a Bruins jacket. He, he'd wear a headband that said Boston on it. He was Boston through and through, just like yourself. You were Dor- Duke yeah. of Dorchester there. So the Boston bad boy here, he's like a homage to uh, Tony Rumble. Oh, cool. Yeah, you know, it's like Duke gave me this name because I don't keep up with the modern wrestling. I got to tell you that, Duke. You know, it's the old yeah. school stuff for me. This modern stuff, it's like a soap opera. I don't get time for it. So oh, he's, I said, I need a good name. Get me someone lined up, someone classic. And I said, Boston bad boy. Clearly, that's it. that's me. That's who because he is. I, yeah. you know, someone's got to be the bad boy in this situation. <laughs> well, well, uh, I, the way I got my name was through uh, Chief J Strongbow. Oh, hi, Chief. You know? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tell us about yeah. that. And uh, what it is, uh, we were wrestling in, uh, I believe, in Attleboro. And at the time, I was working in the uh, shipyard. At uh, General Dynamics at uh, Four River in Quincy. Yes, sir. The old factories uh, the, there. Yep. Yeah. And uh, so I was late getting to the match, and I <clears throat> and the chief. I come walking in, and the chief said, "Well, with I won't say the word." He said, <laughs> he said, you know, well, if it ain't the F N Duke. Of Dorchester. <laughs> Look at that. Your reputation preceded you. <laughs> nice. Nice. If he only knew, right? If he only yeah. knew. Oh, yeah. oh, I tell you, we all just started laughing, unreal. And then uh, some of the guys said, hey, you know, that sounds pretty damn good. You, yeah. know, you ought to keep it. Yeah. So the, exactly, Chief J. Strongbow gave me that name. What? Well, see, it's, yeah. it's little moments like that that could carry you for the rest of your career. Because I'm going to tell you right now, Pete. Uh, as a young child growing up and being a huge wrestling fan, I, I knew of Ric Flair and Hogan and all that. But all the local guys would always say, "No, you got to watch the Duke of Dorchester. You got this is a local guy. You have to support him. He's OFD, originally from Dorchester, just like you. You can't yeah. be a wrestling fan if you don't support Pete Darty." And, and that was it. That turned oh, me to a fan. Fantastic! Of yours. I I'm, love that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so oh, you, that's great. You made this great transition later on in your career from from the ring. You did the TV thing. You broke ground there, and then yeah. you took a turn in the, as a commentator. What is that yeah. like? How do you, how do you make that switch? And you know, I, from in the ring, and then now you're you're helping the guys out on, in the what booth. It, what it what it was was Vince uh, Junior. He liked that Boston accent. <laughs> yeah. Who doesn't? Out. 
course. The and, ladies uh, love it. Am exactly. I right, Duke? The ladies love it. <laughs> That's right. So, so he says, look, at, I want you to do uh, ringside announcing, all right, alongside with Gorilla Monsoon. Mm. So him and I were doing the uh, uh, ringside announcing. We were doing that, and we were really getting over real good. And then, uh, stupid me, I said, well, you know, I'm getting tired of doing the uh, announcing. Had I, now, this is where you make mistakes in life. Yeah. Well, it ain't a, it ain't a bad mistake, but you, you should have made a decision. You should have thought it out a lot better than what you did. I did. So I decided to go back wrestling. Yeah. Bad move. Bad move. <laughs> And then uh, after a while, I said, you know something? I'm going to give up wrestling altogether because yep. I was just getting too damn old. Well, well, here's the crazy part there, Pete. You were in the first um, Saturday night's main event, but you were also in the first um, pay-per-view version of the King of the Ring. You wrestled Bret Hart in the King of the Ring. You remember that? Uh, Bret Hart. Yeah. I remember Bret. Yeah, but, you, uh, uh, the king of the ring. You yeah. substituted for somebody who, for whatever reason, they couldn't wrestle that night, and you were in that first pay per view of the king of the ring, which is a strange. Oh. Literally, we're talking almost twenty years from when you started out with Saturday Night's main event. So it's right. interesting that the company used you throughout those periods of time. They knew they could count on you. Yeah, I. Th- that's true. I I was there twenty years. Yes, sir. I got it. I gotta say, I, I love the Duke of Dorchester to be like uh, Bret Hart. Yeah, I may have wrestled him. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, you you have forgotten more great matches than most people will have in a career. That's right, that's, that's, and that's pretty amazing. That's right. <laughs> I have to agree with you. Yes, sir. Yes, and sir. so, speaking of matches, one of your final big matches, we know you pinned King Haku at the Boston Garden. It's the dream of every Boston boy to play at the Garden, whether it's uh, the Celtics, whether it's the Bruins, whether it's the Ice Capades. I mean, you did it, and you did it more badass. You were wrestling. What is you that know, like? What is that like in front of the hometown crowd? I'm going to tell you, it is really fantastic to wrestle in your own hometown yep. in a great uh, arena like the Boston Garden. Now, this is the old Boston Garden. This yeah, is the, the obstructed yeah. view. There's a lot of I, cigar smoke. Mm. Oh, and a lot of a lot of cans flying <laughs> in the That's ring. Right. That's <laughs> right. Oh, <laughs> the bottles, wine bottles. That's right. You know? And it, like uh, one day, uh, Stan the Man Stasiak, yep. he's in the middle of the ring, and all I can see is bottles and cans flying by, by. And then all of a sudden, this thing hits him right in the leg. You could see him grab his leg, his thigh. Oof. And uh, it was a dart. Some nut threw no a ki- dart. Jesus. Are you <laughs> yeah. kidding me? I mean, the bottles weren't bad enough. Yeah, I know. The dots. darts at and, them. That that was the final straw, and Vince McMahon, uh, senior, and junior, uh, they said, "Okay, from now on, we want security yep. at all all the gates coming in, and at all of as they're going through the uh, turnstiles or whatever." And he says, "We want all bottles and cans confiscated." You know? Wow! And that that began with really when wrestling. You could go in and bring your kid and not worry about getting bean by a bottle or something or a can. And then then it really uh, shaped up good going into it. Well, thank goodness for that. And listen, shout out to uh, Sean Stasiak, Stan the Man Stasiak's son. You know, he's been in the business for a while there too now, uh, Duke. Stan's little boy there. He ended up yeah. making it to the WWE and, and well, all that good stuff there. Sean. That's good. Good for Sean. So I got to ask you. I mean, just going back to the Haku thing. This guy was known for being tough in the ring. Can you take this guy? Could you take this guy in your day? Yeah, I could. <laughs> Matter Absolutely. of fact. Matter of fact. I love it. That is awesome. I, hey, remember, I, I was trained by the best a guy named Jim Peckham. He was the Olympic wrestling coach, and he taught at some uh, fancy college right there in downtown Boston. Uh oh. And he taught me how to put a hole on, how to counter the hole, and how to reverse it and put it on the other guy. So you were a shooter, right. basically. You, you, you I, were I, a shooter. Yeah, I was a shooter. Yes, sir. And that's another reason why I didn't have to worry about a, 
anything. Once yep. they all found out I was a shooter, then you, you 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 treated that guy with respect. That's right. Or you would have you would have yeah. twisted him up yeah. in knots, right? Bob, Bob Backlund. Oh yeah. Fantastic. Yep. Yep. You know, and uh, several other guys, shooters. Yeah, unbelievable. You know, I, I I love the idea. In my mind, this match at the Boston Garden, the guy doing the call is Johnny Most. Yeah. And he's saying, here comes King Hato and the Duke of Dorchester. I, and I think, in my, I think if we make the movie, that's how it's going yeah, to have to be. Smoke in the air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. You know, I... I didn't think of that, but now you say that, I'm saying, Jesus, that's just how I sound like. That. <laughs> that's, that's a thrill. Yeah, that's an honor. To be. Yes, sir. You know? Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> now, Duke, we we know that you have a a, a battle that you you have going on right now, where you're going to kick out at two at least. There, uh, you, you got a surgery coming up, right? Yeah, on uh, December seventh, Pearl Harbor Day. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I get, uh, I'm going in the hospital for an operation uh, at the uh, uh, Falmouth Hospital. It was supposed to have been it, just the, uh, maybe a one-day thing, but now they said, no, this is going to take a whole week because we have to keep you under uh, under um, surveillance. <laughs> of course. <laughs> you know what a word. Observation. Yep. Observation, yeah. yeah. Hey, Get a word. <laughs> do, do you have any words of encouragement for anybody else who may be going through something like that, where they got to go under for a few days or what have you? Uh, I tell you what, I, I got a great family. I have two daughters, Lisa and Linda. I've got a fabulous wife, Joan, and they support me 100% on this here operation that I'm going in to have. That's you know? right. And they're giving me a lot of confidence. And uh, as well as the doctors that are doing the job. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. So uh, anyone going into such a situation like this here, just think positive. Absolutely. You know, that's just always think positive. That's beautiful. You know? That's beautiful. And I got to say, if if you if you're confident about taking Haku, I, I don't think you have anything to worry about anyway. That's right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's right. I mean, this is this Haku. is e- this is easy peasy. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, before we let you go, Duke. Yes. There's, and I was telling you this before when we when we spoke a couple of days ago. There is a Facebook uh, group that is dedicated to you, where literally you got a whole bunch of your your fans that talk to each other and they they share old pictures and some of your old matches yeah. and what have you. Uh, they're going to be listening to this this interview here. Uh, so if you have any words for the guys who are keeping the yes, the Duke of Dorchester alive, please go right ahead. I think I know who it is. I think it's. The guy running it is Pete Randu, mm-hmm. and uh, he is a fan, fantastic guy. He has been to every match when he was a kid at the uh, Jack Witchies in Attleboro, mm. and then when at Jack Witchies moved over to the Provident Civic Center, him and his buddy were there all the time, all the time. Uh, they were just fans that I cannot believe, and that's who I think this year is running this year. And I, I tell, I want to tell them from the bottom of my heart, I thank both of them. Fantastic, fantastic. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. It, they, uh, his buddy was Joe Brunette from uh, New Jersey, and the two of them were always at the shows. Fantastic. Wow. Wow, well, that just yeah. goes to show the type of uh, impact that you've had on all of us as, as fans there. And, and, and truly, uh, Pete Doherty, uh, Duke of Dorchester, from the bottom of my heart, on behalf of all of your fans, we just want to let you know that we thank you. We thank your family for sharing oh. you with us and inspiring us for you know for so long. And, and truly, we love you, man. Hey, I appreciate it. I really do. I'm honored to just to come and talk here and say be able to say password back to all the fans that have been so grateful to me and my family and professional wrestling. Thank you. I really do. You guys are fabulous. So with that, shall I say good night? The Duke of Dorchester is leaving. You hear me, baby? I'm leaving the F in Building. Yeah.
You know, th this is the second week in a row where you have spoken about somebody being royalty or being a real duke. And, mm -hmm. and, and again, you're trying to disparage my great name uh, to put them over. You know what you are? You're a pretender. Okay. You're a pretender to it. the name. Okay. That man was the real duke, yeah. the real deal. Yeah. And I think, I have to say, uh, I think I may have inspired that little promo at the end there with my Johnny Most impression. <laughs> That was he thought, pretty good. He thought it, he thought I, he sounded like he him. popped for that. He, he did, definitely he popped for that. So I you know? so I try. You know what? When there's someone I like to talk to, unlike you, yeah. I like to have a nice conversation. I like to make them laugh. Oh, I really? like to make them feel comfortable. Oh, you, yeah. I could do without. Give to be quite break. honest, give me a break. Listen, I oh. mean, my turkey timer's popping up. I, it's got to be. So what are we doing here? Well, you know, I we we could talk a little more here, but you know what, folks, you've been so loyal. That we're gonna let you go home. Okay. <laughs> he doesn't let me go home. No, no. He's gonna, gonna let, let you go. We're home. gonna let you go home. Yeah. So go ahead, have your turkey, have your uh, eggnog, have the have whole your nine spiral yards, ham. Your spiral ham. Which Wait, do I you love. like eggnog? I love eggnog. Really? Love. Okay, it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I have a confession here. What? Never had eggnog. Why? Uh, there's just something about. I think the name turned me off. The dairiness of it. Dude, I'm not a huge dairy. Fan old New England eggnog. The it stuff has the in the whiskey yellow. And the, and the, oh, you the mean brandy. add the whiskey? So add make it, it already has it in it. You can buy the bottle already made with booze in it's it. It's called Old New England. So is that that's from the liquor store, obviously? Yeah, or yeah. the packy, as it's we call it here. Ten in New bucks. England. Ten bucks. So you're buying it pre-boozed. Unbelievable. Really delicious. So you're not you're not a fan of the plain eggnog. I like plain eggnog, but you prefer it the correct way. Of course. Now, do you have the glasses like from Christmas Vacation? No, the I don't. Glasses? I'm, I'm very cheap, man. <laughs> very cheap. You are very cheap. I am. How much does that spiral ham cost you? About four ninety five. <laughs> I got it on sale. <laughs> yeah, you got it on sale. You didn't even go for the. For, you didn't even go for the frozen. I got turkey. it on sale from Demoulas. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I tell you, that place. Yeah. Went to the went to the the Demoulas before yep. Uh, today. Yep. To prep, and did it last year too. What a nightmare. See. Now I'm going to say nightmare. It's a nightmare if you don't like people. Mm. It moves. They they have a system going on. Sure. But sure. you better be ready to be elbow to elbow with some of your neighbors. That's the way it is. Uh, and you got to get there early. Otherwise, the good stuff's gone. See? Because what, what can they do? Because everybody goes the day before. But uh, the Demoulas is the way. Demoulas. <laughs> I'm telling you. Shout out to Demoulas. So maybe I'll try the uh, the eggnog. Try the eggnog. Uh, save me some of that ham. I know I know you won't because you're, no, rude, you're rude like I that. don't care about you. You're like absolutely that. rude. That's right. And, uh, you know, have a nice Thanksgiving. You too. Say hi to mom. Yeah, you as uh, well. Because she likes me. Well, even probably Even though she not. needs to set you straight. She wants to arrest you. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I'll sue. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and let me go eat myself into a coma. Yep. And then just uh, relax for the fine. next four days. Fine. Get out. Folks, thank you for joining us today. Of course, the Duke of Dorchester, Pete Doherty. Absolutely. Man right One of there. my favorite guests that we've had on yeah, so really, far. Yeah, really. That was my favorite interview. Absolutely. Uh, to our wonderful guests who left voicemails, <laughs> yeah, no. you can try a little harder next yeah, time. You know, there's no next time for these well, people. Yeah, They're on a list now. Probably not. Because they're on do not call list. That's right. Join us next week, folks. This is the Duke signing off saying bye-bye, everybody.